This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to TG Productions. My name is Tom. My name is Ian. And welcome back to some Walking Dead. Here we go again. You, have, you came back to set the score here this time. I've never won on the channel. You've got to go change that this time. So we've got the Hunters versus a interesting video game you made. Yeah, it's a little have. alliance that we're going to introduce you to in a second. Yeah, so we'll go to those crews and we'll see you in a sec. Okay, this is how things look for our 250 point battle report in the forest. We've got the Hunters versus this kind of gaming alliance that you made. Yeah, um, I was doing a bit of reading actually because I never played the Telltale games about where Lee and Clem come from. And when I was doing the reading, I was surprised to see Herschel uh, pop up in the first chapter. So I thought that for today's battle report, it might be nice to throw those guys together, see how they work together, and if that recreates any scenes Cons in the game. Yeah, we're continuing our thematic scenes. I'm really hoping Mantic get the license to do the adult Clem, mm -hmm. who comes later in the game, because she's yeah. really cool. Uh, she just had a story wrapped up lately. Lee's your leader. Yes, he is, and he's got a really good leader ability because there's two models that could have been the leader. It could have been Lee or Herschel, but I've gone with Lee because he's got the resourceful leader ability, which could be very handy, so we'll keep him nearby to Clem. Uh, Lee's got a leather jacket and a hatchet. Uh, the leather jacket's been pivotal in battle reports that we've done before. It's favourite thing, though. It certainly is. We've got Clementine next to him. Clementine have decided to be a tactician because sometimes I like to manage the threat. So uh, being a tactician is handy. I've given her an extra red dice as well on her melee, just so that you know she's not not too too weak. She's also got a claw hammer as, you, as depicted on the model and a backpack because we're playing the standard game of collecting counters. Try to do as wizzy wig as we can. Yeah, and uh, I have given her a lasso though, which isn't on the model, but um, might be a fun piece of equipment to just try. Just move out. walkers around and stuff, isn't yeah, it? It's like it a three can, inch range weapon. Yeah, and it can lay things prone, which can make killing walkers a lot easier. It very can. very good. So you've gone for Billy Boy, Super yeah, Stop Shop I really shooter. like Billy. I think I've used I've used Billy. I've only used him at least once before. Yeah, well, we had the Green Family. Yeah, didn't we? I might have used him twice. I can't remember. He is a great Great model. Um, anyway, he's got a compound bow and an ammo reload. And then finally, on the side in the white shirt, we've got Herschel with his vet bag, just to make sure that basically we keep everyone alive for as long as possible. And he's got a machete so he can defend himself very well. He can lop off the wounds. Yeah, and... so it's like amputate, isn't it? So for the hunters, for me, hunters are quite interesting at the moment. I couldn't field all five of them, sadly, for the points, and that means I've just got rid of Albert because he's the, the low nerf one. There's no leader ability for them, but they've all got some quite fun rules. So Greg is going to be my boss man. He's got a tranquilizer gun. He is there to just try and knock people down. I like the idea of the hunters kind of like tranking people and taking them away. Yeah, for 14 points, it's a good weapon, that, isn't it? He's also one of two that ignore Clementine being a kid, which is also very, very valuable. It for certainly me. is. Uh, David at the back has got a M4 carbine, and I've... Uh, <laughs> Tricked the silencer on that because I originally put it on the track gun and realised it didn't need it. So that's mm -hmm. that silence. He's able to output quite a bit of shooting pain. Uh, Charlie in the hoodie on his knees. He's actually the better one at shooting, but I've geared him up for combat for this one just to make it a bit more fun. So he has got a hunting knife and a hatchet. So he's dual wielding. Mm -hmm. So he's potentially doing quite a bit of damage in melee. And then finally, Teresa is going for the all the dice option. She has got a 8mm or 9mm pistol mm -hmm. with a suppressor, meaning it's a 50-50 whether it's noise or mayhem, which means she's going to be rolling four red dice four? when she <laughs> wants to shoot at things. Wow. So that is, she's very much an all or nothing character. Now, I think there's some very interesting lists that could be built here, but essentially I'm going to try and hang back, pepper some shots, hopefully get lucky with my suppressor and my quieted weapons, mm -hmm. and then try and finish the job afterwards. So, we'll go and line up the crews and we'll show you this gorgeous forest battlefield. Right, and this is how we have lined up to start the battle. And you've bunched really closely together and I've gone for like a, a long distance spread in this uh, beautiful foresty board. Well, my plan to be honest is to keep everyone close to Herschel because he's the medic man, isn't he? And I want everyone <laughs> to stay alive for as long as possible, particularly seeing how many guns that you've got over there. Yeah, we've both gone for like the WYSIWYG lineups and we've already covered that. But yeah, I've got a gun line essentially, which is why I've spread the hunters out a little bit. They are in their favoured terrain. Mm -hmm. uh, so what Ian and I have said is any cluster of three trees together, the triangle within that will be the area terrain for yeah. forest. Um, so essentially you've got five supply markers you can see highlighted with the kind of colour bases underneath. About 12, 13 walkers I think. I've actually lost yeah. count of how many I've put out now. It looks a lot doesn't it? There's actually. a lot of scary walkers ready to go and essentially standard fare, get as many supply tokens as possible. So we'll roll off, we'll do a shield for me mate and a <laughs> blank for you. That's a blank. So do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first. Lovely, so we'll go to the first activation which will be the Alliance. 
Okay, so for the first activation then, Billy is going to unleash an arrow with his compound bow at this walker and he doesn't kill it, which is annoying. The walker rolls to on his defense, the walker right. tanks it. That's not, not what we wanted. So, Billy basically, that is a key walker that we're going to have to fight, so he's going to just do slightly more than a creep uh, to pull that into it. So basically he's declaring a run to make yeah, a little bit of noise there. basically, that. yeah. Lovely. Over to Charlie for me then. He is going to creep into the area terrain, but luckily he doesn't have to half his move because he's a hunter and they're super sneaky and that kind of stuff. And he's just going to make noise just to draw this one walker off the supply token and into his waiting hatchets. Okay, so for the second activation, we've got Herschel, who's going to join his son. He's just going to do a little sneak action to engage that walk to make sure that we do get a confirmed kill. You're just going to make sure she dies now. Yes. She dodged that shot. So Basically, yes. Yeah, we need, need to get rid of it. Okay, Teresa, for me then, she is just going to make a sneak action just behind this cover here. And she is going to declare a shot at Johnny Rotten using her pistol. She's got two red dice for a shot and then two red dice for the gun. So Can I get a headshot there? She yeah definitely yeah, gets the headshot the there which will remove him. Uh, she has also got a suppressor on her gun so we'll be able to see here if she manages to not cause mayhem. So on a shield uh, any mayhem cause becomes noise. Mm -hmm. Hey, very lucky there. So that will just draw the attention of yeah. this walker in. Calculated early risk is, when I'm not within is, 10 inches of all the walkers to start with. Uh, so that's our first walker dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lee's first action is basically going to be to do slightly more than a creep, just so they create some noise and he's going to pull this walker in towards him so he can engage that one. David, for me then, he is going to sprint into base contact with this supply token. However, he's not going to be able to search it because he's created noise, which will shamble this police walker over to go and investigate what trouble he's causing. Already shuffling trees out of the way for our recording. <laughs> it's a lovely board, but that is the disadvantage to it, isn't it? But it's a very, very nice wooded area. Now, we're going to make some progress through it. We're going to run with Clem to the supply token and we're going to search. And when we search... Well, the we, run will make noise, it certainly which will we'll get this walker here, but we did pre-measure that he was just short of touching the token. Yeah, he is, which is good. And uh, we find nothing of use. Nothing so at all. There's, wor there's worse things in the deck. There is definitely it's a supply worse token, at least. It there is. is definitely some worse things in there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that goes into the backpack. Point for you, then. Mm. All right, let's go big early, then. So Greg is going to make a sneak action just to here which will now allow him to have a line of sight to Clementine. That is nasty. That is so, really, really nasty. Now, Clementine would usually be okay because she's a kid. I would, but I just said off camera then that I was really pleased because I had just a kid special rule, so it would be fine. And then but I had then, my Yu-Gi-Oh trap card moment where I was I like, know. but the hunters hate children. <laughs> uh, so they've got prey on the weak, so they ignore the just the kid special rule. That so is he's nasty. hopefully going to trank her so that she then gets killed by the walker. So... Yeah. Uh, white dice and a red dice for Greg's shooting. I need to wound here, and you've got what on your defense? Just a single red, a red. dice for So I'll roll here. I get uh, three so successes, and you've got one. one at the back there. So That's that is two wounds. Two wounds done to her. And she's stunned, which means she is laid prone. And uh, yeah, good luck with that walker coming in. That's nasty. That's wonderful. Well done, Greg. Kill the children. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go to the event phase and see what happens next. And this is how things look going into the event phase the first turn, and Clem prone with a big scary King Hill walker over her is, is going to end badly. It's going to be a 50-50 chance because we've only got a red dice on our defence because we put the extra red dice on the attack like we said earlier, so really it's 50-50 for Clem to or survive. Or she's removed, yeah. So let's draw an event card and see what happens. Yep, yeah, so we get forest walkers, very thematic. You, yeah, we, you put this one in, this is an appropriate I've choice. Been, I've been really looking forward to this coming up and it's come up first. So it says all threat levels. Uh, walkers shamble out of the trees. These walkers are placed using the rules for walkers entering play, but are placed on an edge of area of woods instead of the board edge. If there are no woods, but there are, so we can ignore that bit. And it says the number of walkers placed depends on the current threat level. So we're on all quiet at the moment. We are, so so it's red dice. Red dice enter place. So do you want so. You've got priority, mate. And we get one. One. Which is nice. So we'll uh, place that one walker and we'll cut back in a sec. 
And we've cut back, and Ian has just basically paced Rock, Walker Rick yeah. up by Walker Shane near uh, my guys at the top right corner. I of thought the screen. better do you some damage as opposed to me because you've been very, very mean to poor Clem. Then that's what the hunters do, though. They kill yeah. things. So we uh, we gain one to the threat tracker because we have definitely got combat. Yeah, plenty of it. And um, we'll go get stuck in, and we'll start with your alliance. Then we'll go over to the hunters. Lead the way then, mate. Okay, so let's start with Billy and Herschel. Uh, Billy is just base red, but Herschel has got a machete, which has got amputating dual wield, and it adds a white dice to his base red as well. He's the worst doctor in the world with that machete. He is. Ah, That's there we definitely go. definitely a dead walker, yeah. I don't think. No. Perfect, perfect. Murder, second walker gone. Excellent. So now then, we move across to Lee. Now Lee, because Clem has been hurt, he actually gains an extra dice to his attack, which is fantastic. It is actually... That's his fiercely protective rule, isn't it? It is, very good rule. So he's base, uh, base blue, his hatchet gives him a white dice, and because Clem has been wounded, he gains another white dice, so... A bucket of dice against this powerful walker. He does. Walker. But we does don't get, get the, the headshot. Oh, but he does manage to get the uh, the push away and the knockdown yeah. prone, so that walker is flawed. Uh, now, Lee might actually be able to save the day here for Clem because he he's do. got the ability to give her a reroll, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's re uh, resourceful, which means once per turn, one friendly survivor within eight inches of Lee may reroll a single die of any type, and that could be quite crucial. It's a good job you pick Lee as your leader, not Herschel. It then. really it's is. It's paid off really well. It really is. So, Clem has got a red die, she can only defend. The walker's got a red dice. Yep. Walker rolls one. Clem now, rolls nothing. We can reroll, we can reroll. So, You're let's see what we to. get. Yeah, One, it's a draw. Survivors win all draws, I think. So I just get pushed away there. You are incredibly fortunate. If Clem had died, then that would have been very sad indeed. Right, we'll go to the Hunters and see if they can kill. Okay, on to the Hunters then. So Charlie is dual wielding a hunting knife and a hatchet. So he's going to choose to take the white dice and the hatchet here at mm -hmm. the two. Uh, meaning he can re-roll one dice because he's dual wielding. So he's got two white dice against this walker here. Lovely. He gets yeah two yeah. with the headshot. He absolutely brutalises it. Watch Fantastic. me knock all of the trees over here now. Very nicely done. Paratrooper that one out there. Uh, nice. And then David isn't great in terms of his attacking ability. So I think he's going to defend with his two red dice that against this walker just fair. here. So uh, he rolls one. Yeah, that rolls walker one. rolls one. So... Good choice draw, to defend, really. Push it out of the way. I think that's, I'm always very, very worried about the general kind of like one red dice yeah. attack. Um, so he has win a melee, not technically win a melee, it's been a draw, so he can't really do any dodging. Um, yeah, so let's check the prone walkers and go to the end phase. And this is how we look at the end of the first turn, and oh my god, Clem got so <laughs> lucky. I'm really survive. pleased with the actual outcome of this turn, although I did fear at the start. You know, taking two wounds, I've got Herschel that, that can heal her later. So I think it's it could have gone worse, couldn't it? I have got priority going into this next turn, though, so I've got to try and put some bullets into her <laughs> while she's prone. Because <laughs> the hunters are callous in that way. They are, um, they are. So yeah, we've had the prone walker stand up next to Lee, so that's going to continue to be an annoyance, despite the fact he did so much damage to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll go into turn two, which will be led by the hunters. Okay, so we've just tactically moved to tree again just to show you. Charlie is going to move to this position here mm -hmm. and he is going to search this token and he manages to acquire, oh, for God's sake, Ooh, a nice. bear trap. Uh, so searching survivor immediately takes a wound, which drops him down to three. Very nice. Uh, roll a black and white dice. On a shield, there's no further effect. On a blank, the survivor <laughs> screams and creates noise. Uh, that's a blank, he screams, so uh, I'll just push that in. I think you will scream to be uh, fair, he steps in bear trap. Yeah, so Walker Rick, who would be next to the tree that was there, will come in and be like, what are you screaming about, my friend? Mm. What, are you, what are you worried about? And I'm just going to cover up the fail there with the tree. <laughs> okay, so Clem's got to do something because she's lying on the ground. So her first activation is simply to stand up, which is a nice action to do. And now she's got to try and heal herself. So she's actually just going to run around here to get to Herschel. So there she goes. That's going to cause noise. This walk is going to move directly towards her and into Lee. Over to me then, and I think David is going to ignore the token he's next to. He's just going to make a sneak action to here, bashing the car with it. 
and he is going to lean over the back of it and try and shoot at Clementine. Poor Clementine. Well, he's the only hunter that I've got who hasn't got prey on the... Actually, no, he's one of two who hasn't got prey on the week, so he's going to have to roll the 50-50 to see if yeah. he can shoot her. Just a child. I'm just a child. So, Don't shoot me. On a shield, I can. Is that the way it works? Yeah, certainly is. So he's going to try and shoot at Clem. Uh, he does not shoot at Clem, so I have to declare somebody else or something else. Yep. So I'm going to shoot at Herschel instead. Ooh, though. right, okay. So, because he realises, he sees this wounded kid dragging yeah. this tranked dart out of her body. He's like, well, right. essentially, you're just shooting the person that's trying to heal her, so, you know, it's still pretty mean. So I've got an assault weapon, but that doesn't make any difference here. Multiple shots, reliable with my M4 carbine. So mm -hmm. I am within 20 inches, so I've got a red dice and a white dice, and I'm going to try and shoot at Herschel. Lovely. Herschel is defence, two reds, no extra buffs, there. that's just his base stats. Okay, so to start, we get two. We get one. So that would be a point of damage. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second round of shots from multiple shots is going to shoot Herschel again just to see if we can spike. Da, 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 da. Oh, destroying terrain. Two again. Two. And we get out of Three, that time. Three, so fine that time. Now I have got a silencer, so any mayhem would just cause noise. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty equidistant with these two, so pick which one you want. Actually, no, this isn't even on the board, this one. This is one oh, that, that was on the uh, mark. It's a wasn't proxy. It? So this is just going to hit the uh, hit the old car, isn't it? No problem. Johnny Rotten came back from the dead. He did. A second time. He did. Okay, so Herschel's activation then. Obviously, he's got to use his veterinary bag on Clementine to see what he can do. Now, he rolls a red dice uh, to see how many health points he restores, but then because of his special rule that he's patch up, he adds one on to whatever we roll here, so he restores one, add one is two health points, which gets Clem back, back up, to, up full. to full health. So it's as if, you know, we haven't been tranquilized at all. Just basically anti-venom, sir. Yeah, basically, perfect. And now he's gonna do a run. I want to run so that I can pull a walker into him. So he just runs to there and attracts this fella. Lovely stuff. Easy enough choice for me. Teresa is gonna sprint into base contact with this token. We'll make noise, which will just pull this walker into her. Okay, so Billy's going to extract a little bit of revenge because he's a good shooter as it is. He's actually an expert shot, um, which means that David's not going to get a cover die, so we're going to fire at David. Just ignores that car that's yeah, in front of him. Exactly, he's an expert <laughs> shot. <gasps> wow. Oh, dear God. David's I apologise for how good that was. David, to be fair, I don't know that for picking <laughs> up Clem. David's got two red dice on his defence. He's going to need to spike, so that's two. But you've rolled six, seven, yeah. eight. Wow. So I would take six points of damage, which is just dead. Just immediately oh. wiped him off the board. Well, you know, if you're shooting at Clementine, someone's got to stand up for it. So that's right? a bow you've used there, compound bow. It so is, you don't yeah. make any noise, but you do need to no. check for headshot ammo. Yeah, I do. So checking for all that, we are... I keep I know. Just perfect, it? it's Lara Croft style. Quiver full of arrows. That's incredibly thematic of him just kind of like very carefully. It, <laughs> it really is. Now his second action basically is going to like just creep away and hide now. <laughs> just going to casually walk away. Creep away. away in shame of being so mean. That's the equivalent of like a walk-off knockout. <laughs> He's just killed someone and just strolled off. It really is. Um, oh dear, oh dear, Greg. Greg is utterly furious at the death <laughs> of uh, David there. So he's going to sneak forward to this position here and he can draw a line of sight from the middle of his yep. base through past the porta potty uh, over to Billy. So he's going to try and exact some vengeance with Don't his Don't blame him, I think Billy's put a massive, like, you know, target on his head, hasn't he? So like, uh, I'm going to try and blast him. So uh, I've got a white dice and a red dice on my shooting. Uh, two with a headshot, two. but the headshot doesn't matter. Yeah, so roll two, two so that is nothing to draw. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the headshot works with stun weapons and are disregarded. Uh, I will double check that though, because I'll just see if I need to make an ammo roll. So yeah, don't cause headshots, but they do cause ammo rolls, so I'm going to have to check that. Hey, I've still got some ammo. Thank God for that. Lovely. And we will go to the event phase. Oh, my man down already by like the event phase of turn two. This is brutal. So <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, I've got priority here, so let's draw an event card. Do you want to draw one, mate? Okay, and we are getting traps. Well, we've already we've set off all of the traps. I know. Today. Yeah, it's a dangerous set of woods that we're in. Now, again, this is all threat levels. So the player with initiative, yourself, uh, can choose one survivor inside or within three inches of a wood, and it looks like I've got some that you can choose. I think Lee is probably my only choice, really. I know he's big, uh, big target though. To be so we're going with Lee. Uh, this model sets up a birth trap or a hunting snare, and you are going to roll a black dice, and on a star, the model will take blue dice wounds, which would be very mean. On a star? Oh. Are you happy with that? It's a little well, bit of a I'm happy, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Takes blue dice worth of wounds? Yeah. Okay, so, a wound. Oh, oh, you got away with that one, that's alright. He's still got four wounds left. 
Uh, that also, setting off the trap, causes noise. So I'll take Big Daddy Walker. Yeah. He's going to come and see exactly what's going on Same here. Same graces, yeah, it's got a hatchet, so I think it'll be okay. Doesn't add anything to the threat level, though. Nope. But we have got combat, so we go to level three, so at the top of All Quiet, and we will go to the Hunters first. Hunter's going to start the combat first then, so Charlie is rolling two white dice, he's dual wielding his hatchet and his hunting knife, so he gets one walker, uh, get he one. gets two with the kill, so he'll just readily accept that, so Excellent. the walker gone. As for Teresa, she can either take the white dice for the defence, or the red dice on the attack, I'm going to take the white dice for the defence rolling against the walker, uh, she rolls two, one. good, so she is successful, but can't knock it prone, she just pushes it away. Okay, so Lee's had another walker come into play now, this big one here, so let's see how he does against him. So you're attacking here? Yeah, oh definitely, yeah. So, oh dear god. That's not bad, that is it. Three dice fair. for the walkers, uh, they get two, so definitely. you definitely kill one, who do you want yeah, to kill? let's kill this new one, the big one. And this little lady is going to be knocked prone mm -hmm. because she lost. That's not Excellent. bad at all, he just takes Yeah, yeah we'll do, uh, take that to be fair, particularly given we've already lost a wound on Lee as well. Then we've got Herschel, who is again going to attack, and he is using his machete, which gives him an extra white dice. So he rolls two. And the walkers, two with a bite, but yeah. it's a draw, so Take they are fair. pushed away as survivors win all draws. And here we are at the end phase of turn two, and Lee is just tanking. He, is. he hasn't even had to use his leather jacket yet. I know, well, you see, that that can be so important. We saw that in a match report a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah, Where we did. If you've got one of those up your sleeve, particularly when we get into nitty gritty melee, it's very, very important to keep. Losing David stings a little bit there, because I think having the multiple shots with the silence there is huge. It's a big weapon. Um, however, the hunters are starting to encroach their way in. I think when they start to get towards the middle of the forest, they're going to start being able to be a little bit yeah. more dangerous. Um, so the priority, just hand this over to you, so Thank you very goes much. to you. So we will go start turn three, which is going to be with the Alliance of Survivors. Okay, so Herschel is going to just going to creep around this walker to here, and we are going to search and let's see what we get. We get bandages, which is excellent because he is the medic. Man. Incredibly thematic choice. It is for him, particularly. Over to Teresa then. She is also going to mimic the previous action. She's going to search this supply token. She gets an ammo reload. Ah, excellent. Good for my shooting squad. It is. That's not what I wanted you to uh, get an action. So that's not bad. I can continue with this. So she's just going to sprint around to this position here just to kind of get back with the squad. But that will pull this walker in to engage her in combat. Okay, so I'm going to have another go at doing an ingenious shot. wipe out all my people. After though. that last one, I thought, you know, let's chance his arm again. So Billy, with his uh, compound bow, is going to fire at your guy over there. Going to thread an arrow through. Yeah, let's try. It'll literally be the eye of a needle if we can make it. So, no, it's nowhere near oh, as good that Greg time. has got a white dice on his defence. He gets a one, so you do do a point of damage to me. It's just not as successful as, uh, as last time. Just knocks me down to five health. Okay, then Billy's second action, basically I don't want him far away from the medic man, so uh, he's just going to... The gonna, medic man? Well, you know, could call him Herschel, could call him the medic man, <laughs> so he's just going to creep, um, well, less than four inches, just so he's next to uh, next to his dad. Greg is going to try and thread a shot back at him then. Out of I don't blame him, I don't blame so him. So he's going to aim, he's not a marksman, but he's going to gain a red dice with his rifle shot. Lovely. Uh, shooting at Billy. So a white dice and two red. That is four. The headshot doesn't matter for the sake of this roll. Billy's got a white on his defense. So that would be three wounds. three wounds done to him. Which That's taken down to two wounds. And it does knock you prone. Ooh. So mean I am going to roll the ammo check for him though, just to make sure I don't run out. That is just threaded through. I'll just move this tree out of the way. It is successful. I keep my ammo. I'm quite worried now because obviously, you know, you only need to actually beat beat Billy to actually kill him with a walker. So if that walker moves into him, I want him to have a chance at re-rolling his dice. Takes one bad dice, yeah. though, doesn't it? So uh, so Lee's actually going to run over here because he's got his leader ability that might save him like it saved Clem. So he's just getting within that range, running over there. That's going to track the nearest walker into him so it won't be attacking Billy either. Charlie for me then, he is going to sprint right behind this piece of cover here. Ooh. We'll pull in this walker to get his attention and that will round off my turn. So we'll I see what... That's quite an aggressive uh, stance that you're making it's there. It's knowing that I've got priority next, so I'm hoping to cause some issues for you after that. But we'll uh, go to Clem to round off the turn. 
Okay, so we've got Clementine left. Now, Clementine's going to use an interesting... She's going to Indiana Jones. Yes, she is. She's going to try to, anyway. So, she's going to... Um, in fact, you know what? She might not get a chance to, because if she runs... She's going to pull the yeah. walker in. But, um, She'll still do what you wanted her to do. Though, yeah, she is. Yeah, I was saying off camera then that basically I want to make sure that Billy is protected there, which he is. I was thinking of trying to lasso that walker, but it doesn't matter anyway, because... Um, because it won't be engaging Billy, so okay. that's fab. So we'll go to the event phase then. Mm -hmm. On to the event phase for the third turn then, and things, you've done really well at protecting Billy mm -hmm. there. I think I everyone was, close I'm pleased with how that's worked out actually, to be fair. Our crews are actually staying quite close to each other as well. Yeah. It's a good thematic kind of protecting role, yeah. and there is one supply token now. There is. That is gonna yeah. be the scramble. There it goes. So, uh, we will go to the event card then, so you want to Yep, so let's see what we get. We are getting Grim Recognition, which is plus one to the threat. Getting all the new ones, so we're up to yeah. low threat now. Yep, we are, fantastic. This again though is actually the third all threat levels one in a row. And we've got that awful moment when you recognise a walker's face. <laughs> the player with initiative, which is myself, chooses any survivor within a standing walker's kill zone. The chosen survivor must panic in its next activation. And we place this card face up with your survivor card to remind us of it. So, I think ooh, it's got to be Charlie for so me. That woman behind Charlie just turns around yeah. and he's like, I know Did, you! Didn't I go to school with you? <laughs> yeah, that, I think that could be a good uh, good save, that event card. It's the girl that turned him down to prom. It is. And now she's going to turn him down again in death. <laughs> so, we have got plus one to the uh, threat tracker again, taking mm -hmm. us to five because we have got combat. So, we'll go to the melee phase next. Okay, so we've got melee taking place now, and let's go with Clementine. Now, Clementine should be quite good. Clementine's a beast in combat. She with is. This I'm, extra red dice. I know, I've certainly made her there because she's base red as it is. She gains an extra red dice from um, putting the extra bonus one on one of her stats, and she's got a claw hammer which gives her a white dice. So I'm so hoping she's a super adaptable bruiser. Yeah, she certainly is. I'm hoping she'll get a get a kill with this one. So let's see how we do. One red dice for the walker. Yeah. Walker rolls uh, one. Yay! Yeah, yeah, explodes into go. death. Lovely. Take the dice back. Um, and then we've got Lee. Lee, again, obviously, you know, he's made for this type of stuff because uh, he's got a hatchet with him as well. And he gets two. And the walker rolls one. So Lee you Pro. successfully push it away. And I'll get a pro marker. I probably nudged it a little bit too far, but there. Perfect. Awesome. Over to the hunters then. Charlie's going to see if he can kill his <laughs> prom date that rejected friend. him. So two white dice, able to re roll one because of dual wield. He gets two with headshots. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he, Murders her before he yeah. panics. So what he's going to do is basically he's going to have killed her and then he's going to see the blood on his hands. Like, oh, no. uh, Teresa then, she is going to defend again because white dice is better than red mm -hmm. dice. Uh, you've got one down yeah. there. Teresa gets one. So she's lucky enough to mm -hmm. shove it away and go right. get out of my face. So we all go to the uh, end phase and check prime walkers and cut back. On to the uh, end phase for this turn then, and see the walkers are staying down, the prone ones, but yeah. unfortunately for you, Billy is also down. He is, but you know, I've been in this situation literally a turn ago, and it came out okay in the end. You're lucky that walker near to him stayed down, because I was hoping yeah. to make some noise with Charlie or something to try and drag it into him, but I yeah. think it's, it's relatively secure. Uh, so priority will go to the hunters for this fourth turn, so we'll go to their first activation of the turn. Right, we're going to start things off with Greg, and Greg is going to try and see if he can finish off Billy just Come before on, Herschel Billy. can heal him. So I've got a white dice for shooting, I'm going to aim for a red, and I get another red for my trank yeah, gun. Billy's only got two health left as well, remember? So, oh, it's not great. Three. Mm -hmm. Two. Oh, it's a close. point of damage. It's really close. A point of damage, but that's enough for Herschel to kind of make him feel better. Uh, but that is both of my activations there. So close. Okay, so Herschel then, the priority is definitely Billy, he's down to one health and he's done really well in the game, he's probably the main character so far for me. So Herschel is going to use his vet bag, which is a red dice, uh, which is blank, so he restores one health point. Billy got his patch yeah, up. Uh, which takes Billy up to two. And then his second action, that was disappointing, I can't hide my disappointment from that one. You can use patch up to heal with bandages as well. He can oh. use bandages on any other models within his kill zone. Is that not using the same action twice, though? Oh, I think it's just a special rule that applies to an action. So, um, you use the action of using your veterinary bag, yep. which means you add a point because of the special rule. Your second action is going to be to use patch up to heal him. I would say it's fine. Yeah, we'll do that, because that's, that's probably better than Billy doing it himself, isn't it? Yep, so you... So, um, 
Yeah, we spend the bandages that we found in our supply token that increases Billy up to three. And like Thomas just said, we use the patch up to get him back to four, which is fab. Double check it in the comments, but I'd rather you have the extra point of healing Cheers, than me Tom. saying, no, you can't. You're a star, you're a star. Moral victory. Teresa's not satisfied with this. She wants him dead. So she is going <laughs> to sneak just to the edge here. So she's got a direct line of sight through mm -hmm. to Billy. She's rolling all of the red dice into the sun. So she's got she two is. for her shoot and she gets another two because of her pistol. Oh, I'm not optimistic here. At You've been all. doing all right so far, though. So she manages to roll. Oh, 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 two, oh, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so. I don't think I can survive that anyway. No, no she murders survive. him to death. Oh, Thank poor Billy. God for that. So Billy there exposed like a piñata. Um, I do need to check multiple things here though. So I've got a suppressor on it. So I, at the moment I'm causing mayhem. On a star it just becomes noise. Nope, so mayhem. We'll check that in a second. Also I'm just going to check for ammo. All right, I've still got ammo. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the mayhem and we'll cut back in a second. And the walkers have converged in on uh, poor Teresa's position. We've put the threat up to level six mm -hmm. now. Um, and we'll go back to you, mate, for your next activation. Thank you. Fab. I think the fact that Charlie's going to panic next turn almost makes this a harder decision for me. I've been putting off the inevitable of that panic. I know, because <laughs> if I don't want to go into, into charging, because then you're not going to panic and it might help me in a way. So instead, Lee is just going to creep to here and he is going to search this bag of uh, bag of guns, so to speak. So what do we get? We actually get ammo reload. Yeah, it's a bag of guns. Yeah, it's a bag of guns. <laughs> we're laughing. Uh, not that I have anything at all that I can reload with any ammunition, but I suppose it's better me having it than one of your gun people. It does mean that you've now got three supply tokens to my Good. two, and you've got them on different people, which is yeah. always a good mm -hmm. place for them to be. Uh, so, have you got Clem left? I do, yeah. So we'll go to Charlie, and then we'll see what Clem does. Charlie boy then, how will he panic? Let's have a look. He gets a scream. Ooh, oh, dear. So... He adds one to the threat, so we go up to seven, mm -hmm. and he essentially creates noise. Now, I think the closest walker is probably yeah, Ronnie Walker, so do you want to just pop him into contact with Charlie for me, please, mate? There he goes. Uh, making noise, screaming, panicking, and just crying in yeah. the corner. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I've put the measuring stick down already because Clem, given she's actually quite good in melee as well with the claw she is hammer, quite tasty. Uh, she's going to run and she's going to try and help this walker to take on Charlie. Now, obviously, a run does create noise. Which will uh, be this, this guy is going to, going to shamble away. into the loo just there. Yeah, perfect. Awesome, so we'll go to the event phase. On to the event phase of the fourth turn then, and there's not many walkers actually on the table now. No, so. there's not, but I think that's a good thing, to be perfect. It's a good thing for you currently, yeah, I'm not is. liking it too it much. Is. But uh, we're going to draw our event cards then, so yeah. what have we got? Let's see what we get. We get, ooh, my favourite one actually. <laughs> we always draw this bloody I card. I really like this card, it is plus one to the threat, and there is a storm coming. Now we are in, currently, in low threat. Oh, is that that now takes us into medium. So it says the tension reaches fever pitch. Add another one to the threat level. Takes up to level 10. Perfect. And then immediately draw two more event cards, applying the results one at a okay, time. Okay, draw another card. That is the one I like. I really do. So, plus one to the threat, and it is too quiet. So that puts us up to 11. Fab. And uh, dead simply again, though, the groans get louder. Add two to the threat level. That puts us up to 13 on the cusp of high Ooh, threat. Is it going to end? <laughs> well, I actually thought that it wouldn't come down to the threat track of this game, but uh, yeah. it all of a sudden might do. Next card. So, plus one to the threat. Oh my god, we're in high threat. threat. High threat. So, as medium threat, which was each player rolls blue dice and moves that many eligible walkers towards the nearest survivor, but then in addition, all prone walkers immediately stand. So, we're, we've gone from low threat to high threat immediately. Uh, <laughs> That's roll, why that is my favourite. I've rolled two on my blue dice. Two. Uh, yours is two just off camera, if two there. have that many walkers. Yeah, I've got priority. Dates so, we'll cut first. and do that. I'll be back in a second. And we cut back, and this has suddenly became a really, really important turn. It did. Now. It started off all calm, and you know, there was a little bit of action going on, but that has escalated. I think things. it's because a storm in the forest just freaks everybody out. Yeah, it's like a Slender Man vibe. Of course it does. Um, anyway, so I have moved one into Clem to split like, uh, split that combat with Charlie, simply because I've got initiative, so I can do that. I think that's a wise decision as well, to You've be fair. You've moved one into Teresa, just under the trees behind the porta potty, mm -hmm. so she's fighting two. Uh, I move one into Herschel, and then the two prone ones that we've got near the bottom of the screen have stood up. Mm -hmm. Still no walkers coming onto the board, though. No. Have those forest I'm walkers. pleased about that, though. I'm I am not. really I pleased. A, I need a surge of walkers <laughs> to do some damage for me next turn. Uh, so we'll go to the combat, and we'll start with the hunters. 
So with that plus one to the threat, we're now up to level 15. So we've got three points <laughs> until the end of the game, which is scary. It is. Uh, so Teresa's up first. She's going to defend because she's terrified of these walkers munching into her. So she's yep. got a white dice for her defense and she gets nothing. They get two. Oh, puts her down to two. Nasty. But thankfully does clear some space. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie's got two white dice. He's going to obviously attack the walker that's accosting him. Yep, and that gets a one. Uh, he gets three with a headshot, he yeah, murders it. Uh, do you want to do Clementine while we're here, mate? Yeah, fantastic. So Clementine is not bad, she gets two red and a white, as we've seen already. And she gets the kill, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, so she eliminates that one. Excellent. We've got so many dead walkers. We do. Uh, so we'll go around to the other side, have a look at how Herschel does, and we'll be back in a sec. Okay, Herschel is going to use his machete, let's see how it gets on. And yeah, that's not bad. That's... Oh, off the camera, but no, no, it. it's a kill. So we've got no prone walkers to check. Mm -hmm. So you've got priority as we go into the fifth turn. about that. Okay, so I'm going to activate Clementine first of all, and it's the shortest move possible, going straight into Charlie with her claw hammer to try and do a bit of damage. Taking an activation away. Yeah. Three's then is going to play it tactical. She is a tactician, so she's just going to lower the threat by mm -hmm. one uh, immediately. She doesn't have to roll for it, does she? As a tactician, nope. so down to fourteen. Uh, we've pre-measured this. She's then going to sprint round to this side of Clementine, which mm -hmm. will just basically pull in the nearest walker, which I think is this one. Yeah, go with that. Yeah. Which will just bash into there, just to tie even more things in combat. Oh yes. Okay, so uh, Herschel, before he does anything, is actually going to try and use his vet bag on himself, uh, which he does successfully. Why was that too when that we needed great. it before? So he basically heals himself to full health. Yeah, it does, which is perfect. And then he's actually going to run around and engage Teresa like so. Now that is a run which will have caused noise, so... Which will pull the attention of yeah. that walker in there. There it goes. But that doesn't worry you too much. Not That's massively. Actually, you can pull Teresa away from yeah. time to time. Which, is, uh, which was the aim of that technique, to be honest, uh, perfect. Greg's weighed up so many decisions there. He's tempted to shoot into Clem and Charlie and basically try and floor one, but then he was gonna run into combat afterwards and that would have drawn in a walker. There's so many decisions. I'm just gonna it's try- It's a really tight decision either way. And well, Lee's got it? a difficult thing. So if Lee tries to run into help Clem, he's gonna pull a walker in yeah. and split the combat anyway. So I'm just gonna try and screw Lee over a little bit and hope the event card makes something tasty yeah. happen. So I'm gonna sprint to here, mm -hmm. which will make noise, which will just basically bash that walker into the tree. Oh. And then I'm gonna shoot at Lee. So I've got a white dice and a red dice with my uh, trank gun. I get nothing at all. And we got two. Never mind. Uh, and that is going to be my activation. So we'll go to Lee to finish off the turn. Okay, so it's our last activation of the turn, and Lee is actually going to try and be a bit crafty. Uh, basically, he can give a bonus to Clem and to Herschel, so he's just going to run. He's going to stand and pivot right behind Clementine to kind of look after her, give her his aura. And then that is going to pull the nearest walker in like so, because it would make a direct route for Lee and it's going to attack Charlie. Oh dear. So let's go see what the event card says as we go into this. This is probably the final turn. This is the picture as we go into the event phase then. So what are we going to draw, mate? So we are drawing from the top of the deck. We get plus one to the threat and rouse lurkers. I don't think we've had that one. Plus it's up to 15. Uh, I think we've had rouse lurkers before. Yeah, it's a new one. So uh, we are getting, we're on high threat and it starts off as low threat, which will be uh, as all quiet. Shuffle any discarded lurker cards back into the supply deck. Thankfully we've not drawn them in. I know, yeah, we don't like drawing all the those. other nasty things. Though. We have. Uh, in addition, red dice walkers are placed in contact with each supply counter, but they've all been claimed, so there aren't any of those left. And then finally, uh, in addition, two blue dice worth of walkers enter play. And so that, that is, is going to be four. Four, so we'll cut and do that now. And that was easy enough. Ian's put two on the left hand side of the board. You can mm -hmm. see Johnny Rotten poking out above the trees, and I've got two right at the top of the screen. So we have got combat. Which means we go to level 16. Oh. It's pivoting on the edges. So there, there might be one extra turn. It depends how much yeah. chaos is caused during this. It does. But uh, we'll go to the combat and we are pretty much all getting stuck into each other. Mm. Okay, then this is going to be a, a messy round of combat, but we think we might actually squeeze another turn out of this. I know, possibly. I'm going to push my luck though, so I'm going to go with Teresa in this combat with Herschel. And she's going to elect to shoot first. Oh, come on, Herschel. So she is going to use her four red dice. That's to nasty, select Herschel. She doesn't need to randomise it because they're in the melee phase. 
So four red dice. She get oh, Ooh, you happy with that one there? Yeah, yeah. So that is five two. with two headshots. So, what so you will cancel that one with your. Well, you'll so cancel. So damage. you'll cancel two. So we've got five, six, seven, and you cancel two. Oh, that's five damage. That's enough to kill him. Oh, poor Herschel. Oh dear. Yeah, because it'll take two away. The headshots go through afterwards. So technically, I yeah. rolled five. Yeah. You will take two away, which would be three, three. but then the right, two headshots. Two which is five. Oh no, poor Herschel. That's killed him. So he drops the supply token. He does. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Just below him underneath his card there, mate. Ah, there However, that will push the threat up to 17, and it's going to potentially cause mayhem. So I've got to check her suppressor um, and see if she <laughs> somehow doesn't cause mayhem. Oh, it's just noise. I'll Ooh. take that. Uh, I'll check my ammo roll while I'm here. I've ran out of ammo, but the noise will bring the attention of, I think, just this walker up here, mates. Do you want to make a what show? What about this one that was in, uh, in the melee against her? Oh, that's think? a good point, actually. So we'll bring up one yeah. straight into contact with her. So she can only defend now. Mm -hmm. So should we do the combat? Do you want to roll a red dice yeah. for that walker? Okay, so... She's got a white dice. Uh, she rolls nothing. One. One. That puts her on one health. Oh, that's tight as well. That's close. So we'll clear these dice out of the way. Um, we've got Clementine and a walker versus Charlie. So do you want to roll the walker now, Clementine first? Clementine might be okay. Oh, and the walker. Roll the yes, walker, so we'll roll just walker just in case first. it gets a bite. Yeah. Nope, nope, it's a blank. Okay, so just Charlie's going to attack Clem. Clem's going to attack Charlie. So we get... Um, Two and a bite and a one. Okay, and Charlie gets two and a bite and a one. So that well, is a I'm draw. I'm really um, resourceful for him to allow to re-roll the white dice. Go for it. So let's see what happens. And we get two. That's two just behind camera. Just pull it back for yeah, maybe so people can see. Go, I'm going to use my dual wield then to see if I can re-roll this and mitigate yeah, things. So let's see if we get a bit more lucky. No. So three. Your, you've rolled five, yep. so I take two damage, then another one because he headshot, mm -hmm. which is enough to kill me. Ooh. So that will kill Come Charlie as head. well. Oh, he's dead. And that drops the supply token. It's finished ugly in this set. Just there. It? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, that means that we've got one more turn with the threat tracker currently at 17. This is going to be the last turn, isn't it, pretty much? We've got no prone walkers, and priority is going to go to me here. Mm. So, let's go to that turn. Right, I've just spent about 20 minutes I think, measuring <laughs> stuff there. Uh, there's no point just doing the side orange shot because you can't see anything. As beautiful mm -hmm. as the trees are, it's impossible. Yeah. My logic is this. Greg can just about sprint and snake his run to get into base contact with Lee and Clem. And I was thinking about Teresa, but Teresa not having her gun reloaded yet mm. is a problem. So Greg is going to shoot at Clem to try and damage her and floor her. Poor Clem. Um, Isn't that so how the game started as well? Exactly, that's how it's going to end. Because I'm only on one supply token, so I need to do some pain. So two dice, he gets two on his. And we get Clem a gets one. one. So that is a point of damage. Hang on, uh, where are we? So that takes it down to three. And she is knocked prone. Now I'm just going to put this here because there's no way I'm going to be able to get a to token in all of no. this mess. I'm then going to sprint, so moving everything here because this is like the most delicate procedure on camera. I'm going to sprint to this position here, both. which will pull in this walker directly, and the walker will go into, I believe, probably both, to mm -hmm. be honest, but I'm going to say it goes into me because I'm the one who's made the noise. Okay. Now, because I've got the advantage here of having initiative, mm -hmm. I can split the combat how I wish, but at yeah. the moment I need to get Lee and Clem away. Mm -hmm. My logic here then will be to get Teresa, load her gun, <laughs> and try and kill Clem. Oh my goodness me. Question mark. So we'll leave that there. That's Ian's activation's gone. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. So now we're going to plan Teresa's for another 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've zoomed in for this because it basically comes down to whether Teresa has a panic attack or not. <laughs> Uh, One in six chance that she will do. So she's gonna roll a dice, see what happens to her. Oh no, it's the one we didn't want. Let's just move the tree so you can see it scream. A Plus, loud scream. She was originally just gonna move up to the supply token, take it, and hope that the walker would. Tom had a brilliant murder. plan off camera. Brilliant. Oh, so good. Right, so she makes noise. That is plus one to the threat. That will take us to the end of the game this turn for certain. She makes a screaming noise. 
makes noise. This walker goes, yeah. what did you say? I was going to eat Lee, but now I'm going to go <laughs> for you instead. And I've screwed your fun, Tom. Oh, no. Oh, it's all gone south. Right, let's go to the event phase and just pray for something chaotic. This is the picture to go to the final turn. I'm just yeah. horrified by Teresa <laughs> screaming. That scream, I think, is uh, She's got a really cool it? rule, though. When someone else panics, she can make them run where she wants. But I didn't think about her actually panicking. I know, panicking. I know. Uh, event phase, then. Right, let's have a look. Top of the event pile, we get... Oh, the good old classic, Frayed Nerves. Frayed Nerves. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of ironic, given what's just happened Everyone as well. Everyone is panicking now, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're on high threat, but it starts off as medium. Uh, one model with low or medium nerve chosen by yourself, Tom, creates mayhem. Um, so Clem yeah it's got to be Clem hasn't yeah. it so she's basically going to start screaming very loudly and cause mayhem so um, we could resolve that in a second but then in addition a single blue dice worth of walkers enter play uh, that is a single one so we'll cut back do the mayhem and we'll see in a sec okay and we've moved the relevant walkers into place basically the only interesting thing to make note of is Lee has been pulled away from that combat uh, with Greg. He's had I, I'm shambles. disappointed by that because I really wanted Lee in there to fight him. One has finished just short of Teresa, but we'll show you it closer now as we go into combat for the last actions of the game. Okay, grandstand finish then. This is, you've got Lee and Clem both with a token. Yeah. And I've got Teresa with two to with one token. So I need you to die for a yeah. second, <laughs> essentially. If you, if you could just be killed, that would be great. Clem's in a precarious position, though, being prone, so... So let's start with Lee. Lee yeah, versus the walker. Oh, Lee okay. manages... Uh, so the walker rolls nothing against Lee. And Lee, Lee kills it epically as well. Easily. So that's that walker gone. Uh, I'm... Tell you what, I'm just going to clear some trees. Yeah. Just so we've got some, some space. Some dice rolling space. Uh, so now we've got uh, Teresa. She's going to defend with a white dice. Walker Shane. She gets two. One. Right, so she doesn't die, thank God. So I've got that one. Okay, then. So, Greg is going to attack Clem. Clem can only defend. Yep. But you've got a walker to attack Greg. Yep. Should we roll for the walker first? Yeah, go for it, mate. One. One. Okay. Greg versus Clem, then, basically. Clem's got what on the defence? A red? Yep. One. Oh, Perfect. you get it. So that means you end with more tokens there. Woo! Good game, mate. What Fantastic. a close game that was. And we will go to the uh, post-battle summary now. <sighs> Bloody Teresa screaming <laughs> at the end. I just At no point did I feel like I had that anywhere near close to winning. Oh, it was, it was close to the end. I think that scream just threw just it away. Scream. You couldn't That's see off... solid crew, yeah, though. You couldn't see off camera, but we had a really, really big moment where Tom was measuring it and he thought, oh, you can I was getting round the table at every angle, like, downward yeah. view. Like, how can I make noise and pull people in? It's... And then she screamed. Yeah. And it just all went Just completely out the window. But um, no, really good game, mate. Yeah. I think you had such a solid crew. It was but... a lovely crew, actually. When I saw yours with all the guns, at first I thought to myself, ooh, this might not go so well, because yeah. I hadn't got any guns. I've got one bow and arrow with, uh, with Billy, but that was it. I think we were thinking about doing like a specialist scenario like we did last time, but actually the forest itself, we've just said when we finished packing up there, mm. that the forest itself with all that terrain is almost like its own scenario. Yeah, Like, looking at the lines of sight and all the things for the walkers to hit, it was mm. incredibly thematic for us to it try was. and pick our way through. And we had lots of thematic event cards come yeah, up as well. Yeah, bear trap and yeah, everything bear trap, supplies. forest walkers, and then you got a bear trap as well and a supply deck as well. It's not, not great, didn't appreciate yeah. it. The Hunters, I would say next time, I'd probably try and min-max a little bit more with their dice. Because I realised, mm. I think, one of my ones that I issued for combat was probably better at shooting. Yeah, he had a, did he have a blue dice for shooting? I think so. Yes. But I was like, I'm going to give him a bit more combat stuff. But then not having a leader ability is, is interesting yeah. so far. Yeah. But I love the uh, ignoring it's just a kid. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> you see, poor Clementine. Be alive for Clem. She was nearly gone after turn one as yeah. well, which would have changed the game massively, wouldn't it? It's incredibly thematic of Lee coming to protect and Herschel patching yeah. her up, though. So mm -hmm. a massive well done yeah. again, Thank mate. you very much. That means we've got to play yet another series <laughs> now to try and uh, settle these scores. So Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for coming on, mate. See you we'll soon. See you next one. What a video that was. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, check out this one, because this is great. And check out this one, because this is great as well. If you enjoyed those videos, there is a link in the description below to our Patreon page. If you want to support us, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you.